So a little demonstration on how to use a spreadsheet. This is an open office um, Excel from Microsoft Office and numbers um, from Apple are not too different. Uh, I don't know um, Google Sheets well. So I have in the basic data that you would collect from the website um, for titration. So I haven't done any of the calculations yet on this. But it includes the uh, bureau reading the pH and the statement that the initial volume uh, before we measure our first pH, we added no sodium hydroxide yet. So we want to get the volume of the sodium hydroxide for each step here. And I have it in uh, two different ways. So one way, I wanted to uh, take the difference between the first and second readings, and that'll be the volume I added after the second uh, reading. So, when we want to do a calculation in a spreadsheet, we start with an equal sign that tells us we're doing a calculation. We can navigate with the arrow buttons to move things around, uh, generally, or we can just click right on uh, what we want to subtract. So we want to do the uh, final minus the initial. And you see up in the box up here is telling us what we're typing into that cell. And so it's uh, equal, so we're doing a function. C6 is the uh, cell number. So it's based on um, uh, the column C and the row six. And to do this, so I can just um, copy this down. I want to hold this um, uh, second number, the C5, in its location. So I'm going to click between the uh, C and the 5. And I'm going to add a dollar sign. That holds the 5 when I copy things. So I, I enter it. I have the um, result, 3 minus 2 is 1. And the cell is highlighted with a, a heavy box. And the lower right corner has a uh, little handle. If you grab the handle, click on it and then drag down. We're copying that all the way down. So we've just done a control copy, command copy, control C, which is command copy, uh, or a control V, um, a paste. I'll do another way also, uh, just for this one column here. So down here, I'm going to, just going to copy that initial bureau reading and paste it, um, that is copy it all the way down. So it's not going to change here. It's just going to be the same all the way down. And my calculation over here is a little different. I'll do the equal. I'll grab the next box, uh, minus, and then the initial. And the initial didn't copy the way I thought it was. Uh, and then equal, and what is my initial? That is weird, okay. Let me do that again. Uh, when I copied the left side, it made it into an addition column. I just want to uh, have a single number, so I'll copy that. And now I'll highlight the whole area, and I'll paste it, and I get this, the initial being the same all the way down. So now there's no fixed columns in this. If you click on it, it'll highlight the cells that are uh, included in the calculation. Um, so I just want to copy this whole thing down and I get my volumes again. Uh, so this is our initial one here. So let's do a um, graph on this. So to do a graph, you want the left column to be the X, the right column to be the Y. We can correct that later, but it's more effort. So it's best if you just have it uh, um, X, Y. You highlight the data that you want to graph. And then up on 
top, we have this uh, chart button. So we take the chart button here and um, the XY scatter is usually the best. We don't care about uh, columns and pies and stuff like that. And um, we could put a line on it. Uh, we're not expecting a linear um, uh, function here. So we're not gonna put it in a, a linear fit line later on. And um, we can do our chart, our chart range looks good, uh, our data range. Uh, so we can go to our chart elements. Uh, we don't need to display if there's only one item that we're graphing. So uh, we need a uh, title. This is our pH uh, versus sodium hydroxide added. So our uh, x-axis is our sodium hydroxide. That's in units of milliliters. Our y-axis is our pH. And we have a graph. We can grab that graph and move it out of the way. And let's do the derivative. Um, So I'm gonna make uh, two more columns. Um, so I want uh, to make the slope of the pH to see how it's uh, changing. So we see that uh, we start off uh, slightly higher, we go down to a lower slope, we're gonna have a jump on the slope and then it goes down again. So this jump is another way of identifying where our um, equivalence point is. So that jump is our equivalence point. I don't have good data on this and that I'm only adding half a ml. So I have a gap across this. We want to uh, make our gap smaller uh, in our actual data set. But our slope, we know our slope is, um, we're gonna do the slope on the uh, second column, not on the first one. So we use the second and the first. So slope, uh, it will be the delta y over delta x. So we have our equal, our delta y will be our pH. So we do our second minus our first in parenthesis. Uh, we divide that by our volume. Uh, second, oops, I missed my parenthesis. Parenthesis, our second minus the first volumes, close up parenthesis, and we have a slope. We should be able to copy this down the column now. And that slope doesn't really belong to the first volume or the second volume. It really belongs to the average volume. So I'm gonna make a, a average volume column here. So it'll be equal parenthesis, the second, plus the first close parenthesis divided by two. And we can copy this one down also. So let's do a graph of this. So we highlight the two columns that we want. We select our chart tool, do our scatter graph, go to the chart elements, we can take off that legend. And this is our slope of our pH. So x axis is our volume of NaOH in milliliters. And our y axis is our slope of pH.
So we see that uh, on this derivative graph, it's low, and then it has a spike. That spike is uh, right at the equivalence point or near it, since I have uh, half a ml gaps on my additions. But you see that uh, when we line them up, our spike comes up right where it comes uh, steep on this. Let me show uh, one more here. So um, our second derivative of our pH. So that's the slope of the slope. So see if I can just copy and paste, copy that one, move it down one, put it over, and let's check to see. So I am doing the uh, two on top divided by the two on bottom differences. So that is the slope equation. I copy that down and I'll do an average of the volumes again. So let me just copy it over, check to see if I'm doing it right. So I'm averaging the first two volumes, that is correct. I'll copy this one down also. So now I highlight the two columns, I add in my graph, do a XY scatter, Let me put lines on it. Go to chart elements, take off the legend, this is our second derivative of pH. X axis is our um, sodium hydroxide added in no liters. Y axis is our second derivative of pH. I'm just trying to line these up a little bit here so we can take a look at this. So between the three graphs on the pH one, the steepest section uh, is our equivalence point. Uh, the steep section will come off as a peak on the uh, first derivative, so on the slope of the pH. And I see my axis have shifted a little bit on this one. So let me just try to line this up a little bit better. So getting the, the six here lined up with the six, uh, doesn't have the same uh, endpoint as the other two graphs. Uh, we get, we line up our volumes here. And um, so on the first derivative, the peak is our uh, equivalence point. On the second derivative, we have a peak, we go from positive, negative, have a negative peak, and then go back. So it's really where it crosses between um, positive and negative. That is our equivalence point on the second derivative graph. So if we look at these, it's uh, between 4 and 4.5 on the first graph, between 4 and 4.5 on the second graph, and it's between four and 4.5 on the third graph. Uh, on the second derivative graph, the uh, one advantage is that it makes it a little bit easier to find that crossing point between four and five, um, which isn't always as easy to read on uh, the first derivative or on the original graph.